engineering is actually much more complete than simply the mechanics and the, the, the equations, if you like. So <laughs> I did uh, fine art, chemistry and psychology. Yeah. And I did an AS in biology. Oh, great. So I came without any maths, maths or, or physics. physics. Yeah. <laughs> when you've done, I don't know, 10, 12, 15 or whatever GCSEs and you have A stars and everything and you've got all that sort of stuff, how do you pick three A levels? Well, I always really, I like science at school as well. Yeah. But I think like so many, so many people, I didn't take maths and physics on any further because I didn't, mm. didn't really like my teachers or whatever the decision is when you're 15, 16 years old choosing your A-levels. And you arrive at the university door, and the university says, we only want these three. Uh, maths, physics, chemistry, for example. I never knew I was going to become an engineer. We were losing out on humongously bright, engaging, creative students mm. um, for ourselves. But also, doesn't engineering need bright, creative people? And so by losing out in the university door, because they happened to have made a decision when they were 15 or 16 on the sort of A-levels they were going to choose, the whole profession and the world has now lost that brightness and that creativity. So we decided that we would remove the requirement for A-level subjects in order to capture those people. <laughs> and UCL was, was one of two universities in the country that was willing to take me. So what we're really teaching is that ability to think in that very ordered, um, principled way that engineers need in order to, to do the sort of projects that they do in the end. And that learning is what goes on here. It's How did you find the maths then? In really the hard. Time? Yeah. I won't lie. It was really, really hard. But we got a lot of extra. There was three of us that hadn't done maths um, in my year. Two environmentals and one of the civils mm. hadn't, but he'd done physics. Typically, it's around about 10% of the cohort will arrive with slightly unusual A-levels. Two the two PhDs that ran the smaller oh, class great, great, took yeah. the three of us that hadn't done maths again, like twice in the week. And we yeah. had to do it in our own time. We had to do of it course, like after yeah. uni and stuff. But yeah. it was we could sit down and like do our math homework with them or mm. ask them questions or practice it more. And that support I think, especially coming up to exams, was really yeah, was really good. invaluable. It's it's really interesting. They they are a real catalyst for the others. I sort of stumbled across it in a way and and decided, saw the entry requirements and decided to apply and, and give it a go. Yeah. What they really want to do is change the world. They really want to make that world a different place. And they realise that, that one way of doing that is, um, is the ordered engineering thinking. That if you can solve that problem, if you can work out what the problem is and really solve it, you can change the world. They were, I don't know, silly enough to take me, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, haven't looked good. back. Yeah. Haven't looked back. It's been great. Yeah.